Business's authorization to recommend entering into a development agreement with the Waterloo Community School District for the development of a new bus barn and maintenance facility located at 1601 and 1624 Blackhawk Street and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. Second. All in favor? I've got a question about it. Oh, right. yeah. There's no discussion? No. No letter. He's in the building. Here he comes. I just, I just had a quick question on this, Patrick. Bus bar in question. Well, I want to ask about the bus bar. Sorry. So I want to make sure, are we, are we doing a, a swap for the current orange site? Is that correct? No, we have some community planning development directive. The proposal is, and we're, we're drafting a development agreement to this effect that would come back to council, would be essentially a swap. Um, they would demolish all of the buildings on the orange school site. So that's the orange school. It's the bus barn that's out there. Um, there's some accessory buildings out by the old football field. They would demolish all of the buildings and everything out there, and then we would take ownership of that land for residential development. Um, in exchange, it would do all the items as well for the street department building, which is taking the street department building, um, the salt shed when it's vacated or emptied out, um, and then there's some various uh, street vacates and alley vacates in there as well. And that was the other question I had at the planning and zoning. I know there was some concern about the parking in the right of way and whether or not we are setting a precedent that may come back to haunt us. Could you talk about that a little bit? Sure. Um, the, it's about uh, allowing parking on the parking or essentially having uh, that where they would pave it so you'd have parking stalls that would come straight off of the street. Um, we've looked at that. We approved one uh, for Kugler construction. I think that was over on 12th Street or 13th Street. Um, what we looked at was we, we kind of put forth about eight criteria on that in terms of uh, the amount of traffic on the street, the width of the right-of-way there, if it's excessive over 60, and I think it was at 80. Um, we looked at uh, what utilities were underneath it, if it was gonna cause problems to have parking on there, um, if it was a dead end or a throughway. Um, and the similarities to the, from that one that we approved before to this one are very similar. Um, it's a larger right-of-way, it's a dead end street, so there should be low traffic on there, so we don't anticipate having a lot of problems with people backing out of their stalls and going. So um, we definitely believe it meets the criteria of the ones we should approve for some of these infill development sites um, and helping to get more parking in that area. So that is, those are going to be paved that, that right over that parking? I believe so. We're, we're trying to get that answered for sure. Right. Thank you. That's all I have. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, it passes. Mr. Uh, Vice Chair, I move that we authorize the sale of two city-owned corn cribs located at 4012 Leversey Road to Brad Renner of rural New Hartford for $200. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Adjourned. Motion to approve the agenda. Second. We have a motion and second. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Those we'll same sign. Quentin, if you'd like to take that item. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve Mark Tink to the Plumbing Board Commission expiration date uh, 3 1 2 16. And I will second that uh, new appointment. Do we have any questions, comments, concerns? Nope. Seeing none, all in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Both same sign. Motion to adjourn. I'll second that motion. All in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Well, we are adjourned. Thank you.
Cole. Here. Mr. Jones. Mr. Schmidt. Here. Mr. Lynn. Here. Mr. Morrissey. Here. Motion to approve the agenda. Take it. We have a motion to second the agenda. Any discussion, questions? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Most of the motion uh, passes. Mr. Someone to take the first request, please. Mr. Chair, I move that we uh, approve the request from the Director of Safety Services for authorization to begin the civil service process for Sergeant. Second. We have a motion and a second on that request. Dan is not here. Uh, do you see? Oh, yes, I didn't see you back in the corner there, Dan. Do you? Uh, Need to ask Dan any questions in regard to this. It's pretty self-explanatory, but it's up to you. I have some questions. Okay. Um, on this, a couple of the other expenditures required to give it salary. There's not a salary. What's the salary for that position? The annual salary. That I don't know off the top of my head, Mr. Lind. Uh, Dan Trocka, Director of Safety Services, uh, but I can check and get back to you. Can you? And it just as a suggestion. It, when we put these um, requests in, can we have, Susie, maybe the annual salary, the health care costs, retirement costs, and the contributions so we know the real cost of positions? Certainly. Um, I will clarify this position is not actually to fill a position yet. This is just to create a list. Um, but when we, when he brings it back to actually ask to fill a position, I'll make sure that's on there. That'd be nice. Yep. Um, and that, and maybe you answer my question, Director Kuroka. Uh, this position, you're assuming somebody's going to move up to one of those other two openings. Yes. You're correct. assuming a sergeant move up, so you want a sergeant. Yes. On the civil service. Yes. Okay. And the uh, the process for uh, establishing a sergeant's list is very involved and lengthy. So, and we don't have a list right now. So we just wanted to get the process started. Okay. Understood. Thank you. Can I ask one quick question too? Dan, so what, you know, from a timing standpoint, what would be your ideal on this? Five to six months. Okay, right. thank you. Any further questions? Hearing none, we need a roll call, please. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morsey? Yes. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. That passes. Would someone please take two and three together? Mr. Walker. Ms. Cole. I move we approve a request from Culture and Arts Director for authorization to begin the civil service process for a facility services manager as well as a facility services specialist and make an appointment. Second. Okay. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion on that? We have a little overview on what these two yeah, positions are. Yeah, get this here. Ken Schenko, Cultural and Arts Director. I have a couple of pieces of paper that I think might help clarify this just a little bit. Um, basically, these two positions are the positions that would generally be responsible for supervising our building um, on evening and weekend hours primarily. Um, the uh, facility services manager would have some additional responsibilities in terms of managing maintenance programs, supervising some of the support staff, including maintenance staff, as well as secretaries and receptionists and so forth. Um, this is part of an overall kind of reorganizational restructuring plan to kind of uh, address some of the changes that have occurred in our operations here and also to try and get a little bit of uh, parity among um, different staff as staff responsibilities and so forth have changed over the years and evolved and it also um, does save some money. So um, if you look at the organizational chart, um, previously we had a full-time adult public programs coordinator. Um, that position has been eliminated and uh, there was previously an events coordinator um, and um, that has been uh, that, that position has been expanded and, and revamped. Um, it includes some of the duties that were previously assigned to the public programs coordinator. Um, additionally, some of those duties have been shifted to the curator and the education coordinator. Um, the events coordinator, um, which we are in the process of uh, 
uh, interviewing for right now. That person would be primarily responsible for coordinating events, um, rentals, and so forth within the center um, and in the River Loop facilities. And working with them would be the facility services manager and facility services specialist. So those are kind of um, restructuring of currently existing positions. And if you look at the salary adjustments um, with the decreases um, and then also the increases, overall there's a net decrease of $12,107 and we would receive um, additional REI salary support in the amount of $24,000 to help support that events coordinator position. So ultimately um, the decrease in tax support is a little over $36,000. So is this, a, is this an increase in headcount, a decrease, or is it? It's actually a decrease in headcount. Okay. Right. And pending the uh, situation over there, for lack of a better term, would any of the outcome of that if potentially affect this, that we should possibly wait on this for a little bit, or no? I, I would prefer that we don't. I mean, we really need every, these positions are critical key positions, and um, we really need to have them Build in order to cover the, the hours that our building is open and to be able to be responsive to those events and so forth. Thank you. A question. Was, was um, one of these Mike Giles position, or kind of, kind of? Uh, the, the kind of. Everything has shifted. So, you know, a lot of the positions that were in place, different duties have, have, have been kind of reassigned and so forth. But, um, you know, some of the duties that were previously um, under Mike Giles' position are under the facility services managing, manager. Others are under the events coordinator. Um, so. All those things were previously in the works. And maybe this is a question for you, Susie. Are people hired on a probationary period? Yes. So if my car goes back, it, could This you? process, again, will take a lot longer than, hopefully, than that process. Okay. So, so we that'll solve itself. So. Right. Again, this is, these are both civil service positions, so we'll have to go through advertising and then testing for civil service and then a civil service meeting. and. It'll be a long process before that, and the Mike Guile situation will hopefully be resolved okay. prior to that. And then I would make the same comment with I did with the police. You know, if you would if when people submit these, if we put the annual health costs, the annual retirement cost, and the annual contributions, FICA and stuff, then we can see what that position really costs. Yep. And it will just be an estimate because we don't know if they take single or family or any of that, but we can give you so an we would estimate. Have, we would have something. Right, right. I can give you an estimate, most definitely. Thank you. Any other questions? Hearing none, I would ask for a roll call on item two and three. Ms. Cool? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilbur? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Thank you. Motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second for adjournment. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We are adjourned. Thank you.
Deb at 5.30, so welcome to all of you in chambers tonight. We're not actually in chambers, but welcome to the Arts Center. This is the Monday, May 12th, regularly scheduled meeting of the Waterloo City Council. I'm glad everyone is here. Madam Clerk, would you start us with the roll call, please? Yes, Ms. Cole here. Mr. Jones? Mr. Schmidt? Here. Mr. Lynn? Here. Mr. Morrissey? Here. Mr. Welper? Here. Mr. Hart? Here. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you would all join me, please, and just standing for just a moment of silent reflection and prayer. Thank you very much. Our Pledge of Allegiance tonight is going to be led by Mr. Ruby Jones, our Community Development Director. Ruby, wherever you are. Yeah. There, okay. Please draw me as we recite the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, up under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. You may be seated. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move that we approve an amended agenda, and that amendment is to add uh, another proclamation for Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Month. Uh, with the, uh, addition, with the, uh, that addition, I also move that we approve the minutes from May 5th, 2000, May, May, May 5th, 2014. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding the agenda or the minutes? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We have two proclamations tonight, and if you, uh, as, as you just heard Councilman Hart say, we have a, uh, a, a, a proclamation that didn't make it to the uh, agenda on time, so we have that on there, and I'm going to do that one first. Is uh, Jean Ballmeyer? Jean, why don't you come on down front, and we'll do that one first. Right over here. Welcome. Thank you for coming. Good. And Jean is here to help us uh, proclaim Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Month. And Jean, where are you from? What do you do? I work at Allen Hospital at Unity Point Health um, okay. at the Allen Women's Health Department specifically. Okay. Our program is called Together for Youth. Okay. I'll let you read a couple of things. Say, say a few words afterwards. But this is a City of Waterloo, Iowa proclamation. Whereas we call upon all, excuse me, whereas we call upon other leaders across the great state of Iowa to take a stand in their communities and join in a national effort to prevent adolescent pregnancy. And whereas the city of Waterloo supports the national stance and calls upon individuals, families, organizations, and institutions in our community to join in this effort by calling attention to the significant issue of adolescent pregnancy and to understand the importance of a strong partnership between the community and the family in helping young people foster responsible and positive attitudes toward their sexuality. And whereas the future of our city depends on the public's need to understand and to be educated about adolescent pregnancy, the community as a whole needs to develop positive and ongoing communication with our adolescents to provide solid information and an opportunity for open discussion. And whereas high standards in adolescent pregnancy prevention services represent a strong commitment to the future of our youth. Now therefore, I, Buck Clark, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, do hereby proclaim May 2014 as Adolescent Pregnancy Prevention Month in the City of Waterloo and call upon all of our citizens to support this important event. So I'm going to give this to you, and, and I'm going to give you also a microphone. Now you can say a little bit more about your program. So just, just tell us about your program a little bit, okay? Thank you. Um, yes, I work for a program called Together for Youth out of Allen Women's Health, and I have the privilege of speaking with a lot of the adolescents in the community um, and helping them understand their responsibilities in life as well as how to help them understand the importance of waiting until later in life for sexuality, sexual intercourse to begin, as well as to encourage them to talk about with their families, their parents, about those their values and um, preventing pregnancy before they're ready. So, very good, Linda. You. What a great job. Thank you very much. Thank you for what you do. And this is for you. Is this a hint that I need gum? Or? No. <laughs> Everybody okay. needs gum. This is, uh, this is a, a package of gum, and it says National Teen Pregnancy Prevention Month. 
True on this, each year almost 750,000 U.S. teens become pregnant. That's an amazing statistic. It's actually okay. declined from what it once was. So Is it really? It's making progress. So. Because of all of the good work that you and people like you do. I hope that's part of it at least. Thank you, Linda. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right, and we are going to also uh, proclaim uh, Peace Officers Memorial Day, and I think Director Trelka, and we have a couple, I'm assuming they're here uh, to, to accept this, Dan. Yes. Come on down, gentlemen. For sure. Please. I see that. <coughs> Just come over here, guys, if you would. All right, we are here tonight to read a proclamation proclaiming again. Peace Officers Memorial Day uh, and National Police Week. City of Waterloo, Iowa, whereas the Congress of the United States of America has designated the week of May 11th through the 17th, 2014, as National Police Week, and May 14th of this year to be Peace Officers Memorial Day. And whereas the law enforcement officers are our guardians of life and property, defenders of the individual right to be free men and women, warriors in the war against crime and dedicated to the preservation of life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And whereas it is known all, that all too often police officers are killed in the line of duty nationwide, our community joins with other cities and towns to honor all peace officers everywhere. Now, therefore, be it resolved that I, Buck Clark, Mayor of the City of Waterloo, Iowa, do hereby proclaim the week of May 11th through the 17th as National Police Week and order all flags on all city facilities to be flown at half staff on May 14th, which is Peace Officers Memorial Day. I call upon all citizens to honor and show our sincere appreciation for the police officers of this city by deed, remark, and attitude. I also call upon all of our citizens to make every effort to express their thanks to our men and women who make it possible for us to leave our homes and family in safety each day and return to our homes knowing we are protected by men and women willing to sacrifice their lives, if necessary, to guard our loved ones, our property, and government against all who would violate the law. Dan, I'm going to give that to you with sincere thanks to you and you guys, again, uh, for what you do. Now, wait a minute. Just wait a minute. Don't, don't leave yet. Uh, and I'm going to, who, who wants to say that? I bet these fellows don't want to say anything, Dan, but I, I'll let you and we'll see where we go with that. Well, they're here with the agreement that they don't have to see anything, <laughs> so uh, they're very fortunate. Yeah. But uh, Officer Maho Soljic and Officer Matthew Wirtz are here uh, with me to accept this proclamation, and Mayor, we uh, greatly appreciate it. Right. The Mayor himself was a Waterloo Police Officer for 18 years. Mm -hmm. And uh, what a lot of people tend to forget, and we promised the families of these officers that we would never, ever, ever forget their deaths, but seven Waterloo officers have died in the line of duty. And uh, the first death was uh, more than 100 years ago, and since that time we've lost seven officers, uh, the last two on July 13th, uh, uh, 1981, when we lost Officer Rice and Officer Hoyne. Uh, so uh, I thank you, Mayor. I thank the community. This, uh, you know, we do meet some grumpy and bad people once in a while, but the majority of this community <laughs> sincerely shows their support and are very proud of the Wilder uh, police officers, and I'm proud to be associated with them. As we all should be. Thanks, Dan. Thank you, guys. Very good. <laughs> Thank you. Good stuff to get started with tonight. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. I move to receive, place on file, and approve the consent agenda, items 1A through B12. Also with the approval of the consent agenda, I move that we make our bills payment, which will be read by our finance chair. The bills this week are $1,177,704.62, 1,177,704.62. Second. Second. Very good. Uh, Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding the consent agenda? Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. I don't think Mark Tink is with us tonight. Mark, are you here? I didn't see you come in. 
but uh, I want to recognize Mark Tink, who has been appointed to a plumbing board for the city of Waterloo, Iowa, and uh, just one of those kind of a little bit obscure board, but uh, uh, is certainly much appreciated. Anytime someone steps up and volunteers to be on one of our boards and commissions, uh, it's greatly appreciated, and Mark Tink has, has done so, and I'm sure he will serve with distinction on the plumbing board. So, Mark, thank you much. And also, we are going to uh, appoint Ben Randall from the Civil Service List to the position of Graphic Designer, Digital Arts Manager at the Waterloo Center for the Arts. Uh, ben, are you here tonight? He's not. He's not, okay. Uh, ben is a new appointee to the Waterloo uh, staff, so welcome to Ben uh, here at the Arts Center. Uh, very good. Thank you very much. Item number two, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. Item number two, uh, I'd like to make a motion to reopen and hold the hearing continued from May 5th 2014, and that's for the request for proposals for asbestos abatement services for the following properties, 3137 Independence Avenue, 2375 Independence <coughs> Avenue, 4012 Leversey Road, and 425 Almond Street. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries, and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, do we have any written objections on file to this item? To anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against our asbestos abatement program for those addresses? A second time. Mr. Mayor, Mr. Mayor, make a motion and to close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any questions or comments? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution in confirming approval of requests for proposals, plans, specifications, form of contract, etc. Second. And it's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morsey? Yes. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution authorizing to proceed. Second. Madam Clerk, that's also a roll call vote. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morsey? Yes. Mr. Welford? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion and receive and file and instruct the city clerk to open and read bids and refer to Community Planning and Development Director for review. Second. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. We have four bids tonight, ladies and gentlemen. We have an estimate of $20,000 on this uh, particular item. And so this will be the last one. I, just for all of your uh, information also, but council and, and those that attend regularly, this will also, with our new bid opening policy, this will be the last bids that we actually open at the council meeting. Beginning next week, we've kind of cycled through all of these. Beginning next week, they'll be opened uh, on Thursday at 1 p.m. Is that correct? The first bid is from AAA Budget Environmental Inc. of Cedar Falls, Iowa. Bid bond is for 5%. And the total bid is for $12,905, 12,905.00. The next bid is from Active Thermal Concepts, Hiawatha, Iowa. <coughs> Bond is for five percent. And the total bid is for fifteen thousand six hundred ninety five dollars, one five comma six nine five point zero zero. The next bid is from Advanced Environmental Testing and Abatement, Inc. of Waterloo, Iowa. The bid bond is for 5%.
The bid is for $8,388.8,388.00. And the final bid is from New Horizons LLC, I believe of Kansas City, Missouri. Their bid bond is for 5% and their total bid is for 26,000. 26, 000.00.00. Thank you, Madam Clerk. Yes, sir. I'm assuming you're okay with those bids? Very much okay. Thank you. <coughs> Mr. Mayor. Item number three, Mr. Welker. Number three is a motion to receive and file proof of publication notice of a public hearing. It's for the acquisition or condemnation of agricultural properties required for the Verdon Creek drainage project. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, are there any written objections on file to uh, item number three? There were none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against item number three, the potential condemnation of properties along Verdon Creek? Yes, sir. <laughs> just please, if you're here, just step to the microphone here. Give us your name and your address. And if you can limit your comments to three minutes, please. My name is Alan Alcorn. I live at uh, 7016 Dyser Road. I have farm ground over there uh, next to Verdon Creek. And uh, currently I'm against the uh, proposal for the creek just due to the fact that uh, I haven't been able to see any analysis of, of uh, how much water the existing creek that runs there, Verdon Creek, can handle. Uh, it's out of its banks most of the time. And, um, you know, is there going to be uh, enhancements done to the existing creek to take on more water. Uh, a couple other things that come to mind are flood plains, uh, what will change there, a possibility of that, you know, obviously additional insurance costs and things that go along with that. Um, so, you know, how many acres will drain into that, what the future looks like as well with, um, you know, additional you know, a after a waterway is put in, <laughs> was to keep other areas from tying into that waterway. Um, like I said, it, it disrupts my uh, farm right now. It's, it's projected to run straight through the farm and doesn't seem to have a good transition into the existing creek. So I feel the existing creek needs a lot of work to be able to take on uh, more water without seeing a lot of problems. Mm -hmm. So definitely have concerns around it. Um, can't think there's anything else, but uh, yeah. So those are the, uh, some of the reasons that uh, I'm definitely against the project. Unless more information is shared, mm -hmm. research has been done, or data has been collected to show that this is this is a good project. Okay. Thank you, Alan. I, and I'm, I'm going to ask uh, maybe our engineer Eric. Could you just give like a really brief overview of what the project is that we're asking to do up there? Uh, I don't know if it's you or no. Whichever one can. Uh, best answer that. Uh, thank you. Thanks, Alan. Um, Eric Larson, C Engineer. This is uh, a project that's been from a study that was done many years ago and uh, creates a drainage way, uh, contributes to the Verdon Creek uh, drainage area. It's a smaller area. It's not the whole Verdon Creek itself. It's just a tributary to that. And it'll provide better drainage in that area. It's something we've been working on for quite a while to get in place. Okay, so our, our, our intent is to uh, better the flow up there, to make it not flood, and to keep it in its banks, and just to make that all flow better. Would that be a true statement? That would be for this tributary. Yes. Yeah, right. Okay. And and Alan, what I would encourage you to do, maybe if, if you have time, sometime stop down in City Hall, uh, ask for our city engineer's office, and let uh, let Eric show you the map and exactly what kind of work we're planning on doing. But I think maybe if you understand the project, you'll uh, you'll understand it better. But uh, can I make a couple more comments? Uh, sure. Come to the microphone, please, so we, we don't get you. And I, I have been down there uh, several okay. times. Um, they've asked over the last few years to come out and meet at my property, which has never happened, to review the existing creek that's there. So I agree, he's probably got a, the tributary coming into it, but my concern is the existing Burden Creek and how it works, works through the area right now okay. uh, needs a lot of work and 
okay. the design that I looked at and reviewed with the engineers as well um, didn't look as well planned out as what okay. you would think. So. Thank you, sir. Okay. Are there further comments? Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion to close the hearing and receive and file oral comments. Second. Okay. Um, you want to close the hearing also? No, no never did. Do we got to do a roll uh, motion vote. I made a motion to close the hearing. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I missed that part of it. Council, do you have any questions or comments in regarding this? No, sir. Mr. Mayor, Mr. I know there, ha there have been some uh, questions about just Vernon Creek itself being cleaned out better. Is Eric, is there, could you talk about that, the cleaning of the, the creek itself? Um, is there any plan to get that cleaned out better? Uh, actually, that's I, a Larry, it, it, Larry, I think that's, a, it, that's more of a question for you. Uh, and uh, you know, I know you've done that in the past. If there's uh, an opportunity to maybe do that, take a look at it anyway. Larry Smith, Superintendent of Waste Management Services. We don't have any plans at present to do it. Uh, the Vernon Creek lift station project was just completed. Uh, we have some issues there we need to be looking at before we start looking at cleaning that tunnel out. We cleaned it the last time, I believe, was in uh, 1992. Uh, there's issues upstream that needs to be addressed to uh, keep the silt from flowing down into the tunnel, which it makes it difficult to clean underground. Something we can take a look at, though, I think, can't we, Larry? Maybe try Just to get it on, on a schedule at some point, then. Well, uh, there's another gentleman here tonight that's talked to me about this, and I think it's something we need to take a look at for okay. the near future. We do have it on our project list. It's just not at the top of the project list just yet. Okay. okay. Thank you, sir. Further comments from council? All in favor, please say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I'd like to adopt a resolution to establish the amount of just compensation for certain properties to be acquired as part of the Verdon Creek Drainage Project and authorize the use of condemnation procedures. Second. Madam Clerk, that's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wolper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Very good. That motion carries. Uh, and for anybody that's concerned with that, uh, I do encourage you to, to check with our engineering office and just get a, a full understanding of that, uh, Alan, to make sure that, you know, hopefully you'll be okay with it in the end. Thank you. I remember, let, let's do, um, actually, I remember number four, five, and six are all basically the same motion, and we're setting date of hearings. No, we're not. We're having hearings. We're having hearings. So if, if we could uh, do those together and just have one hearings on, on four, five, and six, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart. Mr. Mayor, and four, I move to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the issuance of ECP-1 not to exceed eight million, and in number five, ECP two, not to exceed one point one one million seven hundred thousand, and number six, ECP three, not to exceed twelve million nine hundred thousand. For all of those general obligation bonds for essential corporate purposes. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed. The motion carries, and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, do we have any objections, written objections on our bond hearing? There were not. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against item four, five, and six? Yes, sir. Mr. Mayor. Just a second. <coughs> Does it make it happen? John Sherman, 1715 Robin Road. I don't know which numbers and whatever, so I'm just going to address them all, but uh, <clears throat> we have several items throughout several pages of this application for budgets. I will read only a couple small ones. Uh, we have a equipment uniforms. We borrow money to buy equipment uniforms at $25,000. Uh, we repair squad or change the squad cars over for like changing the lights and whatnot, we borrow twenty-five thousand dollars for that. Uh, a number of business or a number of buildings that we do the repair work and some of the slight upkeep. And I don't mean heavy, but just light upkeep. We borrow money for how many years and how much percent? And it's just there's a ton of this stuff in here. 
I think probably budget or, or bond money should probably be held for the bigger projects and, uh, and we should figure out some way to make the budget work to take care of the normal maintenance that we would have that I would have to do for my own house. I don't get to go down to the bank and borrow money to borrow, you know, to buy uh, a set of spark plugs for my car. Thank you. Thanks, Sean. Any further comments? And close. Just, just a second, then I'm going to get to Pat, too. Okay. David Drive, 3145 West 4th Street, Waterloo. And, uh, excuse me. Um, I see on an April 28th meeting that we had uh, a general approval of item 12 for EPC 123, GCP 1234 which is also going to be addressed later in these 7, 8, 9, and 10. Um, when we do general obligation bonds, it says essential and general corporate expenses to total, and that total was $25,400,000. I saw in Sunday's paper, now we're going to look at borrowing another $11.5 million. Um, on next month's budget uh, for a list of items, uh, we bond and borrow essentially means the same thing to me. You bond, you're selling money out. You borrow, you're selling money out or you're, you're asking for money. Since I moved here in 2009, I continue to see the sort of bonding, borrowing being done. How far over there, over there, over this, are we going on the city budget, continuing to borrow money, bond money? Uh, does the city not have any money of their own that we get from taxes? My taxes keep going up, five, six hundred dollars every year. I've been here since 2009. Uh, I already said in the meeting we're going to become a Detroit. How close are we? Are we uh, you can't do this with. You won't do this with your money. Why do you continue to do it with my money? Thank you, David. I can't agree with the gentleman. I can't borrow either up over what I'm worth. Okay. You keep saying that the citizens of, of Waterloo are worth that much more? Yeah, if you tax them more. Okay. Thank you, David. We're up to the limit. Pat, did you hear? No, okay. No, okay. Mr. Okay. Mayor, I move that we receive and file uh, oral comments. In closing hearing. Second. Council, do you have any comments before we close the hearing? All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Mr. Mayor, uh, in 5, 6, and 7, I move to adopt a resolution to institute proceedings to take additional action of issuance of said bonds. Second. It's actually 4, 5, and 6, but it's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Wolper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Uh, we have uh, the same motions, uh, generally speaking, on 7, 8, 9, and 10. These are uh, general corporate purposes rather than essential corporate purposes. Would somebody take those four, please? Mr. Mayor? Mr. Hart? In 7, I move to receive and file proof of publication of notice of public hearing on the issuance of GCP-1 for 700, not to exceed 700,000, and in eight GCP-2, not to exceed 700,000, in uh, GCP-3, not to exceed 700,000, number 10, GCP-4, not to exceed 700,000 for general obligation bonds for general corporate purposes. Second. Very good. Uh, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, could we have any written objections to uh, items 7, 8, 9, or 10? There were none. Is there anyone in the audience who would like to speak uh, against, uh, for or against either of these four? A second time. Mr. Mayor, I move to close the hearing for 7, 8, 9, and 10. Second. Council, do you have comments or suggestions regarding those four? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt. If I could, and I apologize, I should have made this on the last three motions, but I, I think it would be appropriate to ask Mrs. Weidner to just kind of give a, an overview of this because I think maybe 
there's a little education part that, that might help, uh, maybe put some folks' mind at ease. So if Michelle would like to do that, I think that'd be wise. Okay. Michelle Weidner, Chief Financial Officer. Um, the bonds that we're requesting you authorize us to sell tonight is the end of a lengthy process from the department heads developing requests all the way back last fall. Um, planning actually is in charge of allocating the capital improvements program funds. We then, after they drafted that, we met with all the department heads. I know a number of the council members participated in those meetings to carve them down to get to the amount of bonds that we plan to issue this spring. I would relate our bonds, they're more like having a mortgage on your home than they are. I know it says that we're buying uniforms, but our fire uniforms are not a t-shirt or even a shirt that any of us are in this room are wearing right now. They are protective clothing that has a, that the life is longer. <laughs> so therefore, specifically for fighting fires, and they're not a short-term expenditure, nor are they inexpensive. We generally, when I schedule the repayments for these, we pay back the equipment in a very short time frame. Police cars, I usually repay within three years because that is where our major use comes. So I, I do try to tie the maturities to the type of asset that we're repaying. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of the other questions that we had. We also, on April 28th, what we were doing was just setting the dates of hearing for this evening. So we are speaking about the same money that we approved the hearing. We set the date of hearing on April 28th. Tonight, we're having the public hearing to get the public comments and your comments before we proceed to sell. And we do set the hearing amounts generally higher in order to provide flexibility as we move through this process if to address any changes. So if, um, as we get later in the agenda, you will see we are planning at this time to actually only sell new money of about, well, eight million plus 3.5, so it is the 11 and a half million. And then we're refunding several bond issues. And that is just like refinancing your home mortgage to get a lower interest rate. That's exactly what we're doing. We're projecting total savings of more than half a million dollars over the lives of the bonds that we are refinancing. The payments will be paid off in at, at least as quickly as the original bond issue, and in some cases, the airport capital notes, for example, we intend to pay off more quickly than the original time frame. So I don't know if there are other questions. <laughs> I'm not well, getting answered here. In our, in our bond indebtedness is relatively level or relatively static year after year, correct? It, it has been. Um, as you all know, for the last few years, we have accelerated the amount of bonds we've been issuing for our sewer system. So our, while our sewer debt has been growing, our general debt has been decreasing until now. Um, that may change as we go forward and need to do more for the sewer system. But we have been able, very fortunate, to hold it very level. Our debt service levy, which directly impacts our taxpayers' tax bill, has been able to decline because of the favorable interest rate environment that we've been in. So tonight when I'm talking to you, I'm glad interest rates are low. <laughs> Other times when I'm collecting interest, not so much. But um, yes, and I know there were also questions about some maintenance items being in <coughs> capital. We try very hard not to do routine or light maintenance. There will be some major repairs that are covered in the bond issue because if we move them into operating budgets, it would actually increase taxes and it doesn't doesn't work very well in governmental financing. So, And I guess I would say we have not been rated yet this year, but our previous bond rating is an AA2, which is a very high investment grade. It's only two steps down from largest companies in the world. So I think that we do have a very good credit score. That's what I would call that. That's the city's credit score. It's very good. Our debt levels have been able to be stable and we work very hard to try to continue that. We did carve these requests nearly in half so that we aren't increasing our debt load. I think if you talk to any department head here, they'll tell you they have a lot more needs than what they're being funded for right now. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Michelle. All right. I'm sorry, further comments? Michelle, uh, Tom. How much did we pay off this year? You know, we were born oh, 11 and a half. Did I we wish pay off 11 and a half or 12 or nine? Um, or? 
kind of. I don't have that number up top my head right now, and I apologize. I should have looked it up, but I would believe that we probably with if I count sewer, we probably did pay off about twelve. Okay. Yes, because we, so we, we I have been keeping that very level. We paid off a little bit more than we're borrowing. We did that. That is likely to. I'm. Full disclosure, that's likely to change because we have some large economic development projects pending right now that will increase our TIF debt load. Um, and TechWorks actually is one of them. That's one of the issues you're going to see us doing. But again, that's repaid with TIF increment, not with general property taxes. And we may also need to increase that for sewer uses. So that may increase. Again, that would be funded with user fees and not property taxes. But Thanks. for this year, we will pay off more than we borrow. We're about the same. Thanks. Further comments? Thank you, Michelle. Mr. Mayor, to that motion I made, can I add uh, to receive and file oral comments? You bet. Second. Uh, okay, we've got a motion and a second to, to close the hearing. All in favor, please say aye. Aye. For the same sign. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution to institute proceedings to take additional actual action of issuance of said bonds in 7, 8, 9, and 10. Second. Very good. And those are roll call votes. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilber? Yes. Very good. Thank you, uh, Council. Um, item number 11, please. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole. I move we receive and file proof of publication and notice of public hearing for the FY 2014 Kimball Avenue Transportation Improvements Project contract number 843. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, same sign. Motion carries and the hearing is now open. Madam Clerk, were there any written objections on file to item number 11? There were none. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak either for or against the Kimball Avenue Transportation Project? A second time. I move we close the hearing. Second. Council, do you have any comments regarding this item? Item number 11. All in favor, please say aye. 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 For the same sign, the motion carries. I move we adopt a resolution confirming approval of plan, specs, form of contract, et cetera. Second. And it's a roll call vote, please, Madam Clerk. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morsey? Yes. Mr. Wolper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. I move we adopt a resolution ordering construction. Second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morsey? Yes. Mr. Wilber? Yes. Mr. Hurt? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Very good. The motion's carried. Now we adopt a resolution approving award of contract to Cedar Valley Corporation LLC of Waterloo in the amount of $5,914,306.72 and approving the contract bonds and certificate of insurance for the FY 2014 Kimball Avenue Transportation Improvements STP U. Dash eight one five five paren seven three one dash seven zero dash zero seven contract number eight four three and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said documents. Second, mayor clerk. Oh, clerk. Madam clerk, please. That's the roll call vote. Mr. Lind. Yes. Mr. Morsey. Yes. Mr. Wilker. Yes. Mr. Hart. Yes. 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 Mr. Schmidt. Yes. Very good. The motion's carried. Uh, thank you, Council. Let's do resolutions, please, uh, three at a time for the little while anyway. 12, 13, and 14. Mr. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Morrissey. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to adopt a resolution approving agreement with Iowa Department of Transportation for a revitalized Iowa's Sound Economy Program, or RISE, uh, project agreement in the amount of uh, $359,115, and the local match is 50% for the development of approximately 1,394 feet of Geraldine Road that will extend the existing road to tie into Airline Highway and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said document. And number 13, a resolution approving the professional service agreement with AECOM Technical Services of Waterloo, Iowa in an amount not to exceed $16,700 for design services for the fiscal year 2013 Blowers Creek Stormwater Lift Station and Dry Run Creek Improvements, contract number 842, and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said document. And number 14, resolution approving the retainer of John Hall and associates in the amount not to exceed $50,000 for purposes of assisting the city in the handling of <coughs> EPA slash DNR related matters. Second. Thank you, Councilman Morrissey. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding 12, 13, or 14? 
Madam Clerk, the roll call votes, please. Mr. Morsi? Yes. Mr. Walpa? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lund? Yes. Very good, thank you. Let's do 15, 16, and 17. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt? Uh, item 15 is adopting a resolution approving school resource officers agreement with the Waterloo Community School District in the amount of $250,000 for providing the assignment of six police officers within the school district for one year and authorize the Maryland City Clerk to execute said execute same. Uh, 16 is adopting a resolution approving agreement with the Department of Justice Office of Justice Programs for Edward Byrne Memorial Justice Grant or the JAG program in the amount of $60,271 with no required cash match to be used for funding of a joint effort by the jurisdictions of the City of Waterloo, City of Cedar Falls, Blackhawk County Sheriff's Office, and the Blackhawk County Attorney's Office from October 1st, 2014 through September 30th, 2017. And item 17 is adopting a resolution approving the award of bid to Traffic Control Corp. TCC of Ankeny, Iowa in the amount of $32,625 and authorize purchasing the product in conjunction with video detection cameras for I-380 ramps at San Martin Drive and I-380 at Mitchell Avenue. Second. Very good. Thank you, Councilman Schmidt. Uh, Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding 15, 16, or 17? Mr. Mr. I just had a quick question on item 15. Um, if I understand that correctly, Dan, that is uh, the schools are going to pay the city $250,000 to provide those six officers and then some potential additional funding for additional manpower as required. Is that correct? Uh, Dan Trock, the Director of Safety Services. That is correct. Do you know why during the budget hearing it was mentioned that that program might be uh, dismissed or, or done away with to affect the budget? No. I, mean, I, I don't see the connection. I don't, uh, okay. I don't recall that conversation. Right. Okay. Occurring. I don't. just want to make sure I was clear on that. Thank you. Further comments? <coughs> Madam Clerk, those are roll call votes, please. Mr. Mr. Wilber? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Yes. Mr. Morse. Yes. Very good. The motion's carried. Let's do 18, 19, 20, 21. Those four, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Cole. I move we adopt a resolution approving bond council engagement agreement with Allers and Cooney PC of Des Moines and authorized mayor to execute said document. <laughs> 19 is a resolution directing the advertisement for sale of $10,080,000 in GO Bonds Series 2014A, setting sale date as June 4th, and approving electronic bidding procedures for the sales. 20 is a resolution also directing the advertisement for sale of $5,015,000 in taxable general obligation bonds series 2014 B and setting the sale date as June 4th approving electronic bidding procedures and 21 is a similar resolution for the sale of eight million seven hundred and sixty thousand dollars in geo <coughs> refunding bonds series 2014 C setting sale date as June 4th and approving the electronic bidding procedures second Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding any of those four? <coughs> Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote, please. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. yes. Very good. Those motions carry. Next three, please. Two, 22, 23, and 24. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Hart? Mr. Mayor, I move to adopt a resolution approving the TechWorks Campus Grant Escrow Agreement with Cedar Valley Tech Work, Tech Work Inc.'s Deering Company, FDP, WTC, LLC, and Bankers Trust Company, and authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said documents. 23, I move to adopt a resolution approving the real estate purchase agreement with my Jean Carr for the acquisition and purchase of 929 Linden Avenue in the amount of $32,920. Authorize Mayor and City Clerk to execute said document. 24, I move to adopt a resolution to approve and accept certain temporary easement contract with the Mayor and Mirella Husich, <coughs> uh, 105 Park Lane, to allow for roadway improvements to Kimball Avenue between Tower Park Drive and Acadia Street, uh, with Department of Transportation, number STP U 8155, parentheses 731 70 07. 
Second. Very good. Uh, thank you, Councilman Hart. Council, do you have any questions or comments regarding 22, 23, or 24? Mr. Mayor. Mr. Lynn. Michelle, quick, give us an overview of 22. Michelle, please. I know that's complicated. Or take your time. Or take your time. Michelle Wigner, Chief Financial Officer. I don't know about quick, but we'll try. <laughs> this is actually kind of exciting that we're getting to this point with this agreement. This relates to the TechWorks campus projects that um, a lot of entities have been working very hard to get development funded at. This agreement is being required so that we can go ahead and proceed with some site improvements to one end of the campus. The city had agreed to provide an economic development grant to the developer to help with the overall project. And this is allowing one portion of that to proceed while they are still working on getting some of the financing for other parts of the project nailed down. Um, it's because part of it is on Deer property, part of it's on the developer's property, and we are granting the funds. There are a number of parties involved that will be signing off before payments are made. And so that, that's what we're doing here. We are going to be depositing the proceeds of the bonds into an escrow account with Bankers Trust Company. And then each of those parties will have to agree each time a pay estimate comes through that that much work's been done and we approve paying it. And that's the purpose of the agreement today. Thank you. Very good. Uh, further comments or questions for getting those through? Madam Clerk, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. Motions carry. Next three, please. 25, right. 26, and 27. Mr. Morrissey. I'd like to make a res or make a motion to adopt a resolution setting date of hearing as May 27th, 2014 to approve request of roof development of Waterloo, Iowa to rezone approximately uh, 0.413 acres from C2 commercial to C3 commercial district to allow for the construction of eight brownstone style condominiums at the corner of East 3rd and Lafayette Street and instruct city clerk to publish notice. In 26, a resolution setting date of hearing is May 27th, 2014 to approve request of city of Baloo to rezone 3.24 acres from M1 light industrial district to C dash P planned commercial district located at the intersection of West Jefferson Street and US Highway 63 formerly known as a grand hotel site and instruct city clerk to publish notice and 27 resolution setting date of hearing as May 27 2014 to approve request of Candio Church of Waterloo for a site plan amendment to the BP business park district to allow for the establishment of a new church facility and for the construction of a new parking lot for the church facility located at 3211 Titan Trail and instruct city clerk to publish notice. Second. Very good. Uh, thank you. Uh, Council, do you have any questions regarding now, uh, right now just on the setting the date of hearing on these items 25, 26, 27? Mr. Mayor, if I, could, I just had a couple quick questions and they're both for Noel. On item uh, 25, the, the number of brownstones has kind of fluctuated between six and seven, and now it's eight. Uh, are they still the same size brownstones or anything? They've just figured out a way to get those onto that lot a little bit better. Is that accurate? Noel Anderson, Community Planning Development Director. Um, at the Planning Commission, uh, Mr. Roof was there, and he actually indicated there's a small change in the square footage per unit um, as they've tried to lay them out on there. Um, I believe these are going to be at 702 square feet per floor. Um, and they're two stories, so they'd be 1,400 square feet um, for these units here. I'm not sure what they were before. Okay. Um, the development agreement that was approved, approved it for at least six units. Um, and obviously, again, as he's continued to refine the site plan, he's found a way to get eight on there. Generally, um, you know, when we've done industrial buildings or similar development <coughs> agreements, we've had a, a size on there. If they've gone above that, they've still met our minimum. Um, we've never had a problem with them going above that. I also had a call from one of the neighbors about a, a wall, I think. That, is that part of the proposal that there's going to be a wall, uh, some kind of a privacy fence or retaining wall or something built up between this and maybe one of the adjoining properties? There is a fence proposed to go around the site. Um, I believe you may have been talking to uh, Mr. Schrock owns a property to the that sounds right. northwest of the site. Um, from what we can tell, um, his, uh, his parking is in the rear. They've either been coming through the parking lot, which Mr. Rip would be re redeveloping and putting up a fence for, 
um, or they'd be coming off of East 2nd. Um, he also has some space along the other side of his building, so we're going to go out there and meet with him to talk about that to where he might be able to put in a driveway or something as well. But it's not clear that he has any uh, permanent easements of access to get to the rear of his property, which concerns him. So he, he could end up not having access to his parking? Well, without having to build a new driveway himself. Okay, but, but he'd be able to do that. Correct. Okay. And then on item number 27, I know at planning and zoning there was a discussion about Number one, a church being built in an industrial area like that. Number one, and then number two, maybe at the Thursday morning meeting, we talked about where the tax uh, abatements went to and what do we get back and where do they go and that type of thing with this becoming a, a church building rather than a commercial building. So if you could maybe just talk a little bit about that. Sure, number 27 is the, is the action to, it's, it's the existing Kraft Cochran building, um, so they would be changing that to a church. Item 28 and 29 also relate to this, which we'll be getting to. 28 would be the approval then of Kraft Cochran to build a brand new building. Um, their current building is 15,000. Their new building would be about 10,800 square feet. Um, so they're downsizing kind of their square footage to better meet their better meet their business meet needs. Um, and then action number 29 is actually the repayment of the grant money. So originally when Kraft Cochran went out here, this is in the Martin Road Tip District. Uh, the city gave them some grant funds to essentially buy them the land so they had the land for free since we did not own it. So Action 29 would have them paying us back for that a grant amount. So essentially we're taking the city out of um, the project where we would not have given them any incentives. They're proposing to sell it to the church building. Um, obviously a church is tax exempt so will not be paying taxes. Um, our thoughts were by the action in 29 of taking the city out of it so that there's no incentives in the project. Um, then it leads 27 as strictly a land use decision. We kind of looked at um, if this building were there and there was no incentives on it, would it be the correct location for a church? We do have some churches and some other industrial and commercial areas along Jefferson Street, Commercial Street. Um, a church is very similar to a business in its appearance with a parking lot, with, with visitors coming and going. Um, so we felt that it was a good land use decision to have the church uh, take over that building. Isn't the plan the church is only going to be there for a few years, ideally? The church, it's a growing church coming out of the Ames area. Um, they generally go, um, it's a student-oriented type service. Um, so they've had a lot of uh, UNI and Hawkeye students, so they like this central location. Their goal would be to be in this building for about three to five years, then build a brand new uh, church building specific to their needs, and then resell this building, hopefully going back on the tax rolls. Thank you. Uh, no, no, just a quick question to uh, Councilman Schmidt question. Um, we already signed a development agreement for six condominiums. Yes, we did. And then we're approving for eight. The, the rezoning is, a, is approving it for eight. So we have to go in and redo the development agreement. The development agreement doesn't say they can't build more. It just says a minimum of six for the minimum assessment agreement. Cool. Thank you. Good. Any further questions? Uh, Madam Clerk, it's a roll call vote. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Walter? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Mr. Yes. Mr. Cole? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Council. 28, 29, and 30, please. Mr. Mayor. Ms. Cole? I move we adopt a resolution setting date of hearing is May 27th to approve request of Corstang Enterprises LLC of Waterloo for a site plan amendment to the BP Business Park District to allow for the construction of a new 10,800 square foot commercial building located at the northeast corner of Cyclone Drive and Titan Trail and instruct city clerk to publish notice. 29 is a resolution approving the release of development obligations between the city of Waterloo and Corstang Enterprises LLC in the amount of $196,020 for 3211 Titan Trail, which is Kraft Cochran. <coughs> and authorize mayor and city clerk to execute said document. And 30 is a resolution setting the date of hearing as May 27th to enter into a development agreement between the city of Waterloo and Eagles Wings 2 LLC for the construction of a 10,000 square foot industrial building east of 2366 Newell Street and authorize the sale and conveyance of lot four of the Northeast Industrial Park plat number one and instruct city clerk to publish notice. Second. Council, do you have any comments regarding either of those three? 
Mr. Mayor, Mr. Lindell, there was a question about sidewalks at that church. Will that be resolved? New Orleans Community Planning Development Director. Yes, it will. Uh, the former Kraft Cochran building, it was discovered um, that they had not put in all the sidewalks required um, in the subdivision requirements. Um, so those sidewalks will be put in as part of the new development. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Roll call vote, Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Lund? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Thank you. Very good. The motion's carried. I do see that May 27th, we're going to have a lot of hearings on May 27th. Anybody else has noticed that? Let's take the next and the last three resolutions, 31, 32, and 33, please. Mr. Mayor. Yes, sir? Item 31, I'd like to adopt a resolution approving second amendment to the development agreement with Tornier Manufacturing, Inc. for the building at 2710 Wagner Road altering the rebate schedule to reflect a minimum value of $400,000 for year one, two, and three, and authorize the mayor to execute said documents. 32 is a resolution setting date of bid opening is May 29th, 2014, and public hearing is June 2nd, 2014, to approve the sale of a 657A property located at 322 Crescent Place, and instruct the city clerk to publish said notice and item 30 is adopting, 33 is adopting a resolution setting date of bid opening is June 5th, 2014, and public hearing is June 9th, 2014, to approve the sale of a 657A property located at 1423 Hawthorne Street and instruct the city clerk to publish said notice. Second. Very good, thank you, Councilman Schmidt. Uh, Council, do you have any comments regarding 31, 32, or 33? Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. <coughs> Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Uh, we're into ordinances, please. Item 34. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Wilker? Number 34 is a motion to receive and file and consider and pass for the second time an ordinance amending the 2007 Code of Ordinances of the City of Waterloo, Iowa by striking in its entirely Article B, Construction Site Erosion and Sediment Control of Chapter 4, Stormwater Management Program of Title VIII Public Utilities and by substituting, therefore, a new Article B, an ordinance amending the 2007 Code of Ordinances of the City of Waterloo, Iowa by amending Chapter 4, Stormwater Management Program. Second. Council, comments or questions on uh, item number 34? Madam Clerk, please, it's a roll call vote. I'm sorry? I did. Mr. Wilford? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? No. Mr. Lind? No. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Wilford? Yes. We'll address this next week for the third reading. Item number 35, please. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Schmidt? Item 35, I'd like to make a motion to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the 2008 traffic code by creating a new section, namely section 564A, two-hour parking, 8 a.m. to 6 p.m., Monday through Friday, on the northeast side of 300 block of Lafayette Street. Second. Very good. Motion to second. Council, do you have questions regarding this, why we're doing this? This is, this is for uh, Queen of Peace. Actually, it's primarily. not, Councilman Schmidt. I, I said that uh, at the agenda meeting, and I have recently found out about it. This is actually, Lafayette is, is, would be behind Queen of Peace. And all of the parking meters are now gone from there. And the reason we took them out in the first place was because they just weren't being used at all. We were, we were receiving no revenue off of those meters. It really doesn't have anything to do with Queen of Peace. Uh, we took them out. Uh, just to make it more convenient for uh, for parkers, but what we don't want to have happen then is for people to start using them as all-day parking uh, for folks that work downtown or residents or whatever. So we're we're asking that council puts a two-hour parking limit on those areas where we have taken out the parking <coughs> meters. There might be some people from Queen of Peace, but I doubt very few. And the reason for this is not for Queen of Peace. Did we talk about? Didn't we talk about removing some meters for the Queen? We've taken out all of the meters around Queen of Peace. The ones on Lafayette, the ones on Third Street, and on Second Street. All of the meters surrounding that have been removed. Gotcha. All right. Thank you. Okay. Further questions? 
to roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynn? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Mr. Walker? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Very good. So we have moved to suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Very good. That motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to consider and pass for the second and third time and adopt the ordinance. Second. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Item 36, please. Mr. Mayor? Mr. Hart? Move to receive, file, consider, and pass for the first time an ordinance amending the 2008 traffic code by repealing subsection 193 Jefferson Street of section 551, parking prohibited at all times on certain streets, and enacting in lieu thereof new subsection 193 Jefferson Street section 551 parking prohibited at all times on certain streets for parking on the northeast side of the 200 block of Jefferson Street. Second. Very good. Council, do you have any questions regarding this item? Everybody knows what this is for and what it's about. All in favor, please say it. I'm sorry. It's a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Morrissey? Yes. Mr. Welber? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lynch? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to suspend the rules. Second. Madam Clerk? Mr. Welper? Yes. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Lind? Yes. Mr. Morrison? Yes. Very good. The motion carries. Mr. Mayor, I move to consider and pass for the second and third time and adopt the ordinance. Second. And that also is a roll call vote. Madam Clerk, please. Mr. Hart? Yes. Ms. Cole? Yes. Mr. Schmidt? Yes. Mr. Yes. Yes. Mr. Welper? Yes. Very good. Thank you, Council. Uh, the motion carries, and that is when that's the end of our regularly scheduled business for tonight. But a lot accomplished. Uh, it is time for oral presentations, so if there's anyone in the audience that would like to speak uh, to the Mayor or Council, now is the time to do so. Uh, please give us your name and address and limit your comments to three minutes. Jim Chapman, 224 Bird Chum. I'm uh, here about a statement made at the last Council meeting about a Councilman being too critical of the animal control. And I guess uh, the gentleman is not being too critical. He's just asking the same questions we're asking of him. The safety of the public, the condition the animals are being kept in, and keeping track of the money. That's all. I guess that's, if that's being too critical, I guess he's guilty, yes. Thank you, Jim. Herrig, 111 Highland Boulevard. Um, this, I want to read into the record uh, an email. I was asked to do this to make sure it's in the record. Uh, this is a email in a, in a communication between Anita Cabell, president of the Cedar Bend Humane Society Board, and Councilman Cole. Um, and this is first from Anita, this is relatively short. Uh, good morning, Carolyn. Let me introduce myself. My name is Anita Cabell, and I'm board president of Cedar Bend Humane Society. Last evening, I watched last Monday evening's council meeting and was taken aback by a comment you made. You stated that you couldn't believe that the board of directors of Cedar Bend Humane Society reelected me as president after losing Waterloo's contract for animal control. I would like to say that you have never met me, nor visited our shelter or talked with our board of directors. How can you say such a thing without knowing anything about the subject? You folks seem to think that we made so much money from Waterloo Animal Control. That's the furthest from the truth. If you would visit the shelter, you could see for yourself that Waterloo Animal Control was working in the red. We, the board, directed Christie and Carla to increase Waterloo's contract amount, which they did. Losing the contract for Waterloo Animal Control has not been devastating to the shelter. In fact, just the opposite. Christy and Carl have done an excellent job over the last or the past eight years developing partnerships with many rescues around the entire Midwest as well as many humane societies within Iowa. 
We have many different breeds of dogs to offer the public besides pit bulls, although there are still lots of that breed out at our shelter. You made another comment about Cedar Bend Humane Society still having their token pit bulls. Last Monday when I viewed our pet finder on our website, there were seven pit bulls out of 12 dogs listed on that, that link. Again, I would like to invite you and any others out to the tour of our shelter. I would like to invite any of the council to sit down with our executive committee of the board and go over any questions you may have. You talk about our lousy service. We have never been contacted at any time about any lousy service. Wouldn't you think if it was such a lousy service that we would have been given the opportunity to respond to the charge? Please, I urge you to come out to the shelter. Again, if you would like to meet with the executive committee, I can certainly arrange that. I just ask that you quit saying things about our shelter that are not true. I believe that your information is coming from a couple of folks who think they know, and believe me, all that information you have is not true. I have documentation to prove it. Uh, saying for myself, that last paragraph is the most important one here. They invite all you folks to come out and I'd be more than happy to sit on with you at any given time you want to come out, whether it's one of you or the whole board. Thank you, Randy. Hello. Uh, my name is Greg Tagtel. I live at 111 Kelly Court in Waterloo, and I am uh, here to speak in support of Mike Guile. I've known Mike for many years and worked with him through the Playhouse and various community events. He has always shown the highest regard in his job and for the Arts Center and in when dealing with the public. I have heard through various sources there are some negative comments coming from current and past employees. And I'd like to state here from what I know of Mike, they're not true. Uh, there was also uh, told to me a staff member was uh, saying that Mike was racist. And from all of my dealings with him and uh, my friends and the 230 Facebook individuals that have signed up on the Support Mike site, uh, that couldn't be furthest from the truth. Um, as I said, our, our Facebook page that supports Mike, uh, 230 individuals that are standing with him and we implore the city of Waterloo to treat him fairly and if possible to reinstate him to his job. Thank you for your time. Thank you, Greg. Hi, I'm Scott Schumacher, my wife Carol, 801 Walgate, Waterloo. <coughs> homeowners in Waterloo for 25 years. I grew up in Janesville and due to a set of circumstances we got married in Allen Memorial Intensive Care Unit Chapel 25 years ago. So uh, We're from Waterloo. Um, we wanted to introduce ourselves um, to you because uh, we are interested in um, getting involved in purchasing some of your distressed properties and refurbishing it. Um, we have owned two rental homes in uh, Waterloo before. The first one we bought in 1989 from a bank for $5,400 and um, it was in real good shape. It's at 308 Oak Lawn um, over near Church Row. And, um, but we cleaned it up. We did an open concept kitchen area, uh, put in new flooring and uh, new uh, bath and kitchen. So it looks nice and I drove by it still, it didn't go inside, still looks okay. We sold it for um, about five times what we paid for it and um, and then bought the Walgate property where Scott's mother lived for a number of years and she did some improvements and converted it into a four bedroom house. And we've just spent the last month improving it again. Um, it's been a really good rental property for us. Um, and um, but we've updated it and um, we'd like to invite staff at least um, and certainly anyone on the council to come inside the house. It looks kind of sad from the outside but we just signed a contract today to have it painted 
and um, um, it's actually quite lovely inside and it will be a rental property and we would like to invite you now that it's vacant to see it so that you could see the standard that we would build to um, What's the address of that property? Code? That's at 801 Walgate, and we're going to be in it for the next <coughs> week. It would be very convenient um, if anyone would like to come by. We're having a little um, barbecue Sunday afternoon, a week from, uh, and anybody would be welcome okay. to come by. Well, I will, I will tell you that uh, we would, uh, I am sure we can do business, for lack of a better word. Uh, we're always looking for people to rehabilitate properties rather than trying to tear them down or demolish them. Unfortunately, most of the properties we get are in pretty bad shape. But the person right there in the green shirt, sitting to your right, is the person you need to talk to. We have a policy for buying what we call our 657A properties. Uh, and um, uh, it's not unusual for people to buy those properties and to rehab them. So. Uh, Noel, if you can get with these two folks and, and kind of clue them in on, 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 the, on the process, uh, we can time. probably work something out and Chris is somewhere. Chris is right there. Chris is the one that really works directly with people to make that happen. We would love to establish a relationship with you. Well, we've met with Chris okay. uh, and, and we've toured some properties. Good. And, um, we're anxious to Good. Undaunted. We're anxious to, uh, to, to do business with you also. Okay, thank thank you, you for thank coming. You. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, motion to receive and file oral comments and to adjourn. Second. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. We are adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <coughs>